or poor management. Overtopping and that risk was very common. So we observed that for that zero, it had bricked, and they were using the brick area as a walkway to get to work. For that one, you see where the sandbags were, they had to use sandbags to protect the it. And then the spillway of Dam 3 was loaded. And then Dam 4 down there ultimately appearing our stage. We were working there then the bridge. When you go to this, across all the, the woods who are wet, some of the dam embankments, the walls, are also kept in good shape. You can see some grasses, some erosion in some of them, the picture over there. And all that somewhere, rip wraps are falling, no extra grass protection, and all that. Sometimes even the material used for construction. Spillways were likely stable, were good. However, there were few exceptions, and we observed that some spillways were broken, and you can see the water flowing there. When it starts that way, then the, the, the possibility of collapse of the spillway is very high. Then, the segment in which we, of which we talked separately, you can see over there that that is the dam reservoir. It's covered with segment and all that somewhere is covered with uh, what they call it grass. And where you see grass growing in the water, then that means that there's high level of nutrients contained in it. We also have the nine storage structures and it was Tono and Bia which had nine storage structures. Nine storage structures play just a simple role of storing water when irrigation is not, not in practice, so they release it back into the system. And although the Tono ones were rehabilitated, that of Bia was not, they were almost in a dilapidated state. The main canals, this is, these are the canals carrying water to the pumps. The one to the extreme left, which is broken, is in the over. The, the one where the human beings are silted with sand, the middle one is full of shrubs. And then the lower one is a canal in here. It has now turned to a dam. So you can see the water can over. The very good one is just, they just rehabilitated Bolinga and the Gia Downs. Bolinga and Botanga Downs, which have we also observe broken lacras and lacra pipes in Tono. You can see that they are broken everywhere. And for some lacras, <laughs> you can continue to see that they cannot carry water for downstream farming. At Via, we observe that the optic valve, that's where the open for the water to flow was, they were in a very poor state. Even the walkway where they walk to the optic valve, you can you have to be very careful, you must be the fall in the wall. Farmers adapted to the use of this kind of infrastructure by using pumps, especially in here, to lift the water from the, the, the canals. And then also they decided to use sandbags, grass, and sometimes mud to block the water from going to other boundaries so that it will raise the stage or the height of the water for use. And they failed the test in no time. As I already said, the risk of dam failure is very high. For most of them, you can see as we continue the pictures. Mr. Chairman, I would like to summarize some of the challenges that I have raised in the presentation so far, as I prepare to bar out of this presentation and also to tax the next speaker to take the mantle. So far, we've been talking about some challenges facing our location described by the Global South. With reference to the rivers and the irrigation system that we have. And we have observed in our various studies that poor 
agronomic practices, which include farmers using their own seed, overwatering, not using recommended agrochemicals, pest and diseases infestation, and farmers also force ripe, especially fruits like tomatoes, by applying some chemicals, and these are not good. There are also some marketing challenges. As we don't have poor storage structures, that we don't have storage structures in summer and poor state, there are transport and handling challenges. And we don't have well developed and defined value chains and marketing structures. Varietal discrimination, especially for tomatoes, has been observed by market teams, and low produce price, especially during bumper harvesting. As I indicated, lack of credit, storage, and agro-processing facilities are very common with our farms. So investment is very difficult. There are or non-existent agro-processing facilities related to this, our irrigation facilities. As the government continues to implement the one district, one factory, we hope that it will change the way the situation looks like. Climate change and environmental limitations are also noted, as I indicated. Then, limited expertise and technical challenges. We have very few extension officers with knowledge in the area of irrigated agriculture. We have limited available expertise in the area of construction of irrigation systems and knowledge transfer in our country. And some contractors do not adhere to design specifications during construction or they use very poor materials during the construction process. Poor infrastructure operation and maintenance has also been noted. As we observed just a few minutes ago. And administrative and managerial challenges, low irrigation rates and low sustainability as in the presentation is something we need to worry about. Poor attitude of our farmers to pay irrigation charges due to their permanent allocation of those because they think their farms belong to them now. Administrative corruption is another feature that is very common in our irrigation facilities. As most of the, the farms or the service charges collected are not documented by the collectors. And there is a high level of fatigue by government, donor agencies, and NGOs. Chairman, I want to look at some emerging opportunities. And we have production, investment, and market opportunities. As there is a high level of a big and growing class that has a high level of taste for horticulture crops across the global south. There's also a flourishing of cultural sector. Our relative proximity to Europe is very good for us compared to Southern Africa, Central and South America. Our relative relatively financial stable and market stability economy across the global south have also been realized and there is a good friendship in the partnership ecosystem between private sector, public and community systems. Our farmers are also willing to pay realistic charges when the infrastructure is well developed. Technology and human resource development opportunities also exist as land saving and labor saving smart systems are now available. Increasing number of young people 
now are venturing into irrigator agriculture. Farmers' adaptation and provision indicates that they are willing to take up irrigated agriculture. And there is investment opportunity for pumps, railings, reservoir construction, and so on and so forth. Government continues to provide subsidies in terms of agricultural inputs and also pays for the salaries of staff engaged under these schemes, except the uh, water uses as well. And there are opportunities now for training in the areas of irrigation and drainage engineering in the University for Development States, soil and water engineering, soil and water conservation and management, agronomy, crop science, hot water, soil science, and so on. I must say that the West Africa Center for Water, Irrigation and Sustainable Polar Agriculture is contributing to training this small power for the global south as currently we have students from 13 different African countries. And our aim is to make sure that we stop the term that is often used in the irrigation sectors as build neglect, rehabilitate neglect, cyclical syndrome. The last thing is that we have infrastructure and policy opportunities in the country as indicated earlier, which will allow us to harness our water resources across the country for irrigation development. There also exist very good policy frameworks and initiatives by government, by the World League One Dam, that will support the cause of sustaining livelihoods. Lastly, Mr. Chairman, the existence of input subsidy, such as fertilizer and seed subsidy, are in existence. Conclusions. Mr. Chairman, as I draw this lecture to a close, I've realized that there are efforts by individuals, communities, local and central government systems in the irrigation subsector in the global south that are interested in growing the system. However, there are several myriad of challenges that the devil the sector. My recent work over the 19 years has contributed to the body of knowledge in the irrigation subsector, support increase, to support and increase its contribution to the broad domestic product of our country, as well as countries in the global south through the provision of technical information, advice on how to many river and stream sedimentation issues, irrigation infrastructure, crop plants and catchment, strategic irrigation investments, and appropriate infrastructure management. And this will contribute to the expansion of the sector while training and research will add expertise and knowledge, which is much needed in the global south. In addition, reduction of aquatic imports, shifting from being an importer to evolving as a net exporter of food crop as a country, especially for cultural fruits and vegetables, will increase, increase employment and degrade the substantial income for the players in the sector, as well as improve nutrition and of individuals and households. A paradigm shift to achieving a sustainable irrigated agriculture to supply and agriculture and therefore they have to give the following are considered. Integration of water resources management system, improved irrigation systems, services, policy and sector reforms, local development and participation, on farm productivity improvement, irrigation infrastructure development, scheme performance and sustainability, Research and research collaborations. Mr. Chairman, as we live here to our homes, I would like to suggest that although we are not comfortable with taxation, 
There's a need to implement taxes and grow economies in the global south. And this will contribute greatly to stopping the low neglect, rehabilitate, neglect, cyclical syndrome. I therefore propose that a 5% revenue from the electronic levy, when passed by the parliament of our country, should be used as a second fund in the creation of the Ghana Irrigation Development Fund. And it's such a fund when supported and implemented by the Ghana Irrigation Development Authority and the Minister of Food and Agriculture should lead to the provision of tapes of the art education infrastructure and technologies across the country for all year round cultivation. This will be critical not only in making Ghana a net exporter, but also in tackling the widening inequality gaps in the country as well as creating employment opportunities for the young people who have shown interest in pursuing a great premiership, which is enterprise development in the Chairman, permit me to acknowledge some people here in Gade and some individuals who unavoidably cannot be here with us for their contribution to my career path in education. I am grateful to everyone here in Gade and to all those who have supported my growth process in and outside the I must extend my special appreciation to my dad and mom. My daddy of blessed memory. For the care and the love extended to me and my family. Daddy tells me to go for good. He asks me <clears throat> to attain the highest heights in the education. And I'm here to celebrate. I celebrate him as a house fondest memories of him when he prophet <clears throat> how to write and take simple as much how calculations <clears throat> although he never had formal language. The love and care received from our dear and lovely parents have molded us for excellence. And I built my heart to them and celebrate them. My sincere thanks to also go to the Abagali brothers. Mr. Francis, General Ra, Kaduna, Gora, Osibisa, Emmanuel P.C. Mohamed, Bartholomew of West Memory, Samuel, Professor Samson Abagali, Luis. Abagali, Abi, Abagali, Mark, and the rest. The support was also received from their spouses as well as me. My extended family has been very supportive, and I wish to acknowledge their support <coughs> up to date. I must singularly mention the fatherly and motherly roles played in advising, training, and shaping my future by my elder brother, Mr. Francis Aguna, and wife, Adam Agatha, during especially fine <coughs> secondary education and university education. Daddy and mommy, I really appreciate all what you have done and continue to do. As I look back to where it all started, I must appreciate individuals at my basic and secondary education, especially Madame Irene, my secondary school teachers, whose songs are here, Mr. Winnibar Post, Madame Stripe, Mr. Puma, Madame Ophelia, Mr. Barry of Blessed Memory, and 
many others. Also the headmaster of the police secondary school, Ghana School, Mr. Mohamed Yakum, and the immediate past headmistress, Adia Amina. The members of the University Governance Council, under the chairmanship of Professor Wayosini, and all past council members and chairpersons, I do appreciate all what you have done for me in shaping my academic group. Similarly, I want to extend a hand of appreciation to Professor Harun Ayakubu, Dr. A.B.T. Zakarian, Alagi I.K.E.B., Engineer Ambusti, for the guidance and mentorship extended to me. The following officers and their staff have also contributed immensely to shaping my growth and process in the academy, as well as administration. Mr. Nuruddin is a Bubakari, the rector of the university. Mr. Hadi Shaibu, the finance director. Engineer Samuel Baba Abiku, director of works. Mr. Edwin Thompson, our librarian. Mr. Azure, the auditor. Then Chief Frederia, our procurement director. The principal of the Nyakola campus, Professor Yonyamu, deans and directors of schools, faculties, institutes, and directors of our university, as well as all staff of the university across our three campuses, Tamale, City, and Nyakola. Your immense contribution and support in this process is very highly recognized. Of special mention, is Professor David Miller, David Miller and the family for the continued support and direction. Reverend Professor Emmanuel Adobe, immediate past president of the Presbyterian University College and former vice chancellor of the University of Cape Town. He asked me to deliver to him my heart, and my heart is filled with joy as the benchmarks he set for me are serving as major guidelines for whatever I do. Although I cannot mention everyone here, all the names that are in mind are really relevant. Also, to mention just a few, Professor Terry Anson, Dr. Batanga, Dr. Amin Alaskan, Director General of the Professor Obing, Professor Fabri, Professor Quenu, Professor Day, Dr. Chansu, Dr. Yebua, Chief Auda Bukhari, Mr. Doji, Mbina Yose, Dr. Martin Okosu and Pedro of Blessed Memory, Dr. Kyo Budadam, Dr. Dari, Mr. Joe Jeffrey, Dr. Sada, Dr. Amablu, Dr. Longi, Dr. Bunu, Dr. Uso Setre, and the list continues. To my dean and the staff of the School of Engineering, I am humbled by the support you have always given me. My masters and PhD students, as well as my mentees, especially Dr. Adongo and Mr. Jose Ajuman, you have a special place in my heart. The role played by Professor Bodana Kanjan, very subject, in identifying and supporting me and others from the Bachelor of Science time to date. Through mentorship in academic, academics cannot be in here. From Bodana, we are a teacher, a counselor, a, men a mentor to me. And I would like to appreciate your immense contribution that has been given to this resource. I cannot forget of the words 
The words of encouragement and guidance were always provided by your husband, Mr. Baba Abdullah. I need to also extend my words of gratitude to staff of the Department of Agriculture and Biosystems in the area of Gainways, especially my supervisor who is here with me today to celebrate this occasion, Professor Nicholas Kebab, <coughs> Dr. Emmanuel Okori of Blessed Memory, and Professor Eben Namensa as well as all senior members of the department. My supervisor at the Masters and PhD level, that is Professor J. Balfour, needs to be celebrated as a father, and together with his wife, Mrs. Patricia J. Balfour, myself and my family are deeply indebted to me and I highly appreciate the advice and family support to always extend to us. <coughs> Special thanks also go to my good friends and brothers, Professor Dennis Aheko of ASCO, University of Cape Coast, who is also here with me today, Professor Gordon Awandari, the Pro Vice Chancellor of Academic and Student Affairs of the University of Ghana and Director of Work, Professor Eric Gireki Dankwa, Director of Work, Dr. Mahesh Kwayar of the University of Kent in England. Guys, let's continue to keep together as well. I very much appreciate all your support and team work spirit. To my Wawisa team, Kokodana, Victor, Umeku, Saibu, Halim, Kuenu, Kobina, Akulubu, Dr. Ayambila, Dr. Batuwe, Adongo, Oiga, Saibu, Mohamed Hadi Saibu, Sir Kregua, Sir Bernard Allen, and Mr. Tony, Mr. Tony Apenikuru, and Mr. Mutau. Please, you all are wonderful individuals to me. To my sectoral advisory board chairman, who said he will be here from England this morning. Dr. Emmanuel Chamba, I celebrate you. Dr. Keith Van Goethe, who chairs the International Scientific Advisory Board, said, I appreciate your work. The management of Clement Kubindu was third down University of Technology and Applied Sciences led by the Vice Chancellor Professor Eric Magnus Wilmot, the Pro Vice Chancellor Albert Dr. the Registrar Dr. Nkamalo Mote, and the Finance Director Mr. Arnab. As well as all the staff of the university, I duly appreciate your support of us. The Vice Chancellor of Simon Yodondongo University of Business and Integrated Development Studies, Professor Philip Yuku Masai, the Pro Vice Chancellor, Professor Emmanuel Pinkimi Desmond, the Registrar, Sergio Basanti, and all the staff there, your ways of encouragement are always in mind. To my part and the welfare brothers, led by Mr. Ronald Kamasi, Mr. Morris Awin. Where I not express my gratitude and appreciation to you all. Professor Juventus B. Zier, Dr. Malvin Abenada, Dr. Masoli, commonly known as Bond, Professor Canton, Colin Kegwe, Dr. Jonas Bugasa, Dr. Isaac Saki, and wife Anton Saki, Hagia Lima Abdul Naza. Madam Gloria and Mrs. Didi Azure, they are always there to support and strengthen me. I cannot forget the roles that are and have been played by my heroes, especially Mr. Sebastian Dorodia and Sir, the good Lord continues to try and protect me. To the UDS Alumni Association, 
led by Pakistan Kabir Hassan, the national and the regional chapters, as well as the 2003 year group. I celebrate this with you and I do recognize your immense support. To the Ghanaskans of them, you are most celebrated here today. The various and diverse roles played by the Vice Chancellor of his staff and the Pro-Vice Chancellor of his staff, Sir that includes Mr. Rashid Yakubu, William Avila Kwame, uh, Benatika, Lydia Fati, Postina, Azaya, Mashoud Ibrahim, and Abukar. The contribution to this is in the job. To my honorable ministers here present with me, I extend my heartfelt appreciation to you, especially my landlord, Honorable Shani Alasan Shahidi, the Northern Regional Minister, Sir, you are always there to support in whatever we do, and we do appreciate that. My good friend, Honorable Dr. Hafiz bin Salim, the Upper West Regional Minister, you have to travel here all because of me. And I do appreciate the time you are spending to celebrate this with me. Honorable Idana Zakaria, the Northeast Regional Minister, is also here with us. Sir, I do my out, heart out to you for all the support that you continue to lend to me. My very good friend, Honorable Dr. Godfrey, say to yourself, MP for what is told me this morning that he was coming. And I celebrate this with you. And to all my friends in the political arena, we pray for good friends, good judgment in all that you do. And I thank you for all the support you continue to lend to me. The role played by traditional authorities, whom have guided my step through advice and according, please I extend my gratitude to you. To allow us the Gunguna Sanarguna, I am most grateful. To my long lost friend, who decided to travel all the way from Ketu to join me in this. So we I say about the port, the severe of weather, traditional area in Haiti. Sir, I appreciate your coming. As I ease out to my boss, who is my teacher, my mentor, and my guardian, Professor Gregory Yunke, Vice Chancellor of the University for Development State. Said, West cannot <coughs> express my appreciation to you, as I will forever remain grateful. May the good Lord continue to bless you. Finally, to my immediate family, for the support provided me all these days in my professional life. My sweet wife, Doreen Doragia, and my children, Teza and Tabek. Your sacrifices and enduring my long stays out of home, travel, and your love, support, and contributions in my career are very much appreciated in this day. The Almighty God, God continues to bless me with love, care, and strength as I continue to pray for His guidance and direction. May the good Lord continue to bless you all for gracing this occasion and also keep us together always. Thank you for coming.
thank you very much. Another round of applause. I now invite the chairman to give his remarks. I would like to ask my voice to be applause. Can we give me another hand of applause? And uh, I would like to say that listening to him for two hours, I just said, yes, this is what happens when you have somebody in my airport to be for 19 years, you have to sit for two hours. I will not attempt to summarize what he said, but he took us through the importance of Jesus and Jesus in our life from the biblical time when I was wondering whether he had been to the seminar. Then he brought us down to the story of Africa, always the regressive side of our story. The importance of water or rivers to address to read those and speaking to our life as we live in the community. Then the town came in, he gave us the chronology of government in Ghana attempts to go and operate dams to improve our culture productivity. And then I have learned two days from here. We will go we regret, we have the same we regret. So we are still at the same point. If we are dancing at one point, we never do one. And then also, we have, if we have this dance, then it means it will improve our groundwater access. So for example, in Tamale, here where we can have a ball as well, the more surface dams we have, the possibility of having more wood in Tamale will also improve. We always complain of fighting the animals for the surface water. And I said, drink the ball the animals will not drink the ball you will well drink that one. And leave the surface one for the animals to drink. But we can't live without the animals. But we make those toys and then we will get the dam and the dam collapses and that's the end. So we could still create the service dam, seven, two, or three, or four purposes. So it will rain and the water will come, flood the whole area, take our food stuff away, they will come and show the pictures, and then a few months later, we start crying for water. So I think we have to create more than, perhaps now when we pay, we don't neglect them, we have to keep them and use them effectively. So, Professor Kofi Abagali, the first alumnus to give the Lord Graham lecture, congratulations once again. And thank you for making me almost, almost yet yes when you were talking about how I mentored you. The only one I can remember very well is when I prevailed on you not to run away from you yes. Yes, he came back from the with his master's degree. And for almost two years, he wasn't given a one year letter because of the system there. I was a dean in Yambala. He came to me almost in tears that he wanted to leave. He wanted to go back to the years, and I said, no, stay. Time will change. And today he's a professor. <laughs> so sometimes, the young ones, you don't run too much. I'm sure if you were to be in the years, perhaps you would have been a professor, but I doubt whether you would have been a dean. Because there are old men there, they will compete with you. They will allow you to get there. I run away like that. Yes. If I were to be there, I don't think I would have really been the king of students. Let's go, Vice President. 
So your wife from you, he has not run away, stay. You shall be well. Okay? On this note, I would like to call the our newly uh, and for inducted professors to come down for acknowledge for people to come in uh, for that meeting. And I'll do it in such a way that face because of what we don't have just to have to see. And so So, all the African professors around to be joined once and for all. Those who are not the person to. Bring this nappy so that uh, after sitting down for two hours, I'm sure. So we follow up with the political leaders, the regional ministers around. Please join them. Other deans and directors who were not part of the professorial around, who came around. Can you please come? Thank you. 
Things who have not come out yet. Yeah, we follow that up with the uh, principal officers of UBS, the registrar, director of finance, and uh, engineer people. Works to tell me all the directors who are here, who are not academic directors, together with the registrar. Please, can you come to me? As I said, you will go down to Okay. There are friends, other friends from UCC, PNUS, whatever they said they came from. And I met, I had an honorable job friend. Please, can you come up for congratulations? So we follow up with the other registers, register for other universities who are here. You be the users, the mayor and the other available. And the president of the alumni association and the executive national who are here to follow up. Register for other universities. With these two guys who are here. Okay. Alumna present here. Okay. Please hurry up. Okay. So, as I said, you go down and greet the chief as the last one. But then, the immediate, the useful heart, the family. Go and get a chief and come back before your family comes to do their job. I hope the kids understand what is happening. Well, I'm sure when they go home, they will ask the daddy what was happening. So, yes, yes.
Thank you very much, Vice Chancellor. I have been well notified that uh, the School of Engineering, uh, that book school, has a citation for him. So whoever is going to read the citation, can you come forward, please? I'm sure for Havana, the entire standing room, so let's make it snappy. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you very much, School of Engineering. We'll take a few more pictures with the inaugural lecture before we call it a day. And so I invite Professor uh, Bagalin's immediate family and extended family to join him at stage for a photograph. The extended family as well. When Prof was counting his brothers, it was an ending. So when he said his extended family, what do you expect? very much. It's now my pleasure to invite the three regional ministers to join me for a photograph.
Thank you very much. Vice Chancellor, co Vice Chancellor, Registrar of Sister University, kindly join for a photograph. While we do that, can I just quickly acknowledge my presence, ACF 01, or is it Damike, Deputy Regional Fire Commander. We also have AG01, called the Samson, Regional Administrative, Regional Administrative Officer of the Fire Service, and AG02, Baba Hudi the regional PRO. Thank you very much for coming. A few announcements. After here, the Vice Chancellor in Management would like to invite all the invited guests, deans, directors, honorable ministers, VPs, pro VPs, registrars, to join them at the UBS ICC for some refreshment. All other guests who are here, when you leave, please take the exit to my left, where you will be given some snacks to take away. So the Wapunta team, after the program, you can join uh, for Kabagali for a photograph. I now invite Mrs. Juliana. Abdullah yeah. Bwa to give us a vote of that.
to family, appreciation family of the Abagali Torini, to staff, friends, and all invited guests. We say thank you for being with us. It has remained a profound pleasure. Have a great day, and God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Boabo. May we now be upstanding for the Vice Chancellor's Street Session. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you all.